Today we'll discuss logical fallacies. And we are going to discuss fallacies of insufficient evidence. First kind of insufficient evidence was discussed in the previous lecture. Today we are going to discuss its more kinds. Let's see what they are. First one is appeal to ignorance. When an arguer asserts that a claim must be true because no one has proven it false or conversely that a claim must be false because no one has proven it true. So that kind of fallacy will be called appeal to ignorance. Let's see its examples. There must be intelligent life on other planets. No one has proven that there isn't. Second example is, there isn't an intelligent life on other planets. No one has proven that there is. Each of these examples suffers from the same basic flaw. What is it? It assumes that the lack of evidence for or against a claim is good reason to believe that the claim is false or true. Let's see the next kind. It is false alternatives. What is it? When an arguer poses a false either or choice, it means he will provide you two choices so, and those choices will be false. So false alternatives will be provided there. So such kind of fallacy will be called false alternatives. See the example. Either we elect a Republican as, a, as president or crime rates will skyrocket. See, there are two choices are given, two alternatives are given. Either choose a Republican president if you don't do that, crime rates will increase. Obviously, we don't want crime rates to skyrocket. Therefore, we should elect a Republican as president. In this example, if you see the arguer claims that there are only two relevant choices, when in fact, there are more than two. He poses a false choice by assuming implausibly that the only way to avoid rapidly rising crime rates, crime rates is to elect a Republican as president. That doesn't seem true. So it means you are giving false alternatives and it will lead you towards a logical fallacy. Let's see the next one. Next example is there are just three types of base hits in baseball. A single, a double, and a triple. See, in the previous example, we were giving two alternatives. Here we have three. So it is possible that we can have more than two alternatives in the argument. So see, Slugger got a base hit, but didn't get a single or a double. Therefore, Slugger must have gotten a triple. This argument poses a false choice between three alternatives, single, double, or triple. This is a false choice because it ignores the possibility that Slugger may have hit a home run. Next one is loaded question. What is it when an arguer asks a question that contains an unfair or unwarranted presupposition, such kind of fallacy will be called a loaded question. Let's see the example. It's a long example. It's a conversation. Joe, have you stopped cheating on exams? Pete, no. Joe, oh, so you admit that you still cheat on exams? Pete, no, I meant to say yes. Joe, oh, so you admit that you used to cheat on exams. Pete, no. See what Joe is doing. Joe, Joe is trying to ask questions in a way that are that is tricky. He's tricking Pete. 
It is easy to spot the trick here. Joe's question, have you stopped cheating on exams? is a loaded question because any direct yes or no answer to it will force Pete to admit something that he does not want to admit. So Joe's apparently single question is really two questions rolled into one. So such kind of questions also lead you to fallacy that is loaded question. Next kind is questionable cause. Let's see what it is. When an arguer claims without sufficient evidence, remember you have no sufficient evidence that no one thing is a cause of something else. It has different varieties. There are three varieties of questionable cause fallacy. First one is the post hoc fallacy. The second one is the mere correlation fallacy. And the third one is the oversimplified cause fallacy. Let's see the first one. The post hoc fallacy. What is it? When an argument assumes without adequate evidence that because one event A occurred before another event B, so A is the cause of B. Let's see its example. Medieval villager, two days after that old hag Jezebel Taylor moved into the village, my cow died. That which must have put a hex on my cow. So this example illustrates how superstitions often have their origin in post hoc thinking. It is a fallacy to think that because something had happened to you after a black cat crossed your path, black cats are bad luck. So same is that you are trying to say that something has done because of it. So that is also a fallacy. Let's see the second one. The mere correlation fallacy. What is it? When an arguer assumes without sufficient evidence that because A and B regularly occur together, A must be the cause of B or vice versa. Let's see its example. To understand it. On Monday, I stayed up all night partying, had eggs for breakfast and failed my calculus test. On Wednesday, I stayed up all night partying, had eggs for breakfast and failed my biology test. On Thursday, I stayed up all night partying, had eggs for breakfast and failed my history test. Obviously, to do better on test, I must stop eating eggs for breakfast. How funny it is. In this example, the arguer has mistakenly assumed that because two events are regularly correlated, means occurring together, there must be a cause and effect relationship between them. Merely, it's not the case. But correlation does not imply causation. The rooster may crow every morning just before Farmer Jones milks the cows. But that doesn't mean that the rooster's crowing causes Farmer Jones to milk the cows. Or in this example, if you see that there is nothing, there is no relation that you are having breakfast in the morning. That's why you are failing in exams. Next one. Oversimplified cause fallacy. When we assume without adequate evidence that A is the sole cause of B when, in fact, there are several causes of B, oversimplified cause fallacy occurs. Let's see this example. Violent crime has declined steadily in recent years. Obviously, tougher imprisonment policies are working. This argument oversimplifies the situation by ignoring other causes that they have likely, contribu likely contributed to falling crime rates, like new policing strategies, changing demographics, reduced use of crack cocaine, or other reasons. So what is what he is doing in this example, arguer is trying to making one reason the sole cause of that happening. So that is incorrect. The so next is 
Hasty generalization is the sixth one, is the sixth fallacy. So when we draw a general conclusion from a sample that is biased or too small, hasty generalization occurs. What is generalization? A generalization is a statement that asserts that all or most things of a certain kind have a certain quality or characteristic. Here are some examples of generalizations. Ale emeralds are green, or most college students receive financial aid, or the majority of dogs are not dangerous. Playing plays are boring. All plays are most plays. So let's see its example. Small business owner, I have hired three sand patrons in the in the past six months, and all three were lazy and shiftless. I guess most sand patterns are lazy and shiftless. This argument illustrates how hasty generalizations can give rise to harmful stereotypes and prejudices. In this example, a general conclusion is drawn from a sample that is too small to support a reliable generalization. It is unfair as well as illogical to stigmatize an entire class of people on the basis of the perceived faults of a few. Now we'll move to the next one. It is slippery slope. What is it when we claim without sufficient evidence that a seemingly harmless action, if taken, will lead to a disastrous outcome, that fallacy will be called a slippery slope. Let's see the example. example. Bans on so-called assault weapons must be vigorously opposed. Once the gun-grabbing liberals have outlawed assault weapons, next they'll go after handguns. After that, it will be shotguns and semi-automatic hunting rifles. In the end, law-abiding citizens will be left totally defenseless against predatory criminals and a tyrannical government. If you see this example, you will notice that this argument has three basic patterns. The arguer claims that if a certain seemingly harmless action A is performed, A will lead to B, B will lead to C, and so on to D. The arguer holds that D is a terrible thing and therefore should not be allowed to happen. In fact, there is no good reason to believe that, the, that A will actually lead to D. Now we have eighth one, eighth fallacy, and that is weak analogy. What is analogy? Analogy is where you are comparing two different qualities or characteristics. So when an arguer compares two or more things that aren't really comparable in relevant aspects, weak analogy appears. Let's see this example. Lettuce is leafy and green and tastes great with a veggie burger. Poison ivy is also leafy and green. Therefore, poison ivy probably tastes great with a veggie burger too. See, both are not comparable. So we are leading towards false analogy. Analogy is not correct here. So it will lead to a false, a fa uh, it will lead to a fallacy. Next one is the last one, that is inconsistency. When an arguer asserts inconsistent or contradictory claims, fallacy of inconsistency appears or occurs. Let's see this example. That place is old news. Nobody goes there anymore. It's too crowded. See what is it. In first sentence, he's saying, it's an old news and nobody goes there anymore. And then 
Suddenly he says, it's too crowded. If nobody is going there, so how is it possible that it is too crowded? So it means you are giving contradictory arguments. Your premises are not, con your premises or your argument is basing on contradiction. So it will lead to such kind of fallacy. I hope you understood the whole lecture. Thank you for watching.